Good evening and welcome to Tuesday evening on Raconteurs News. Thanks for the great tunes there for the warm-up, Luby. I um, hope you all enjoyed that and I hope you're all in the mood for uh, what promises to be a great evening. Um, we've got something really, really special lined up for you. Quite groundbreaking for raconteurs, um, but uh, as always, uh, I'm joined by Jason. Good evening, Jason. How's things with you, mate? Hello there, Andy, and hello, everybody. Yeah, everything's uh, hunky-dory, smashing, ship-shape and Bristol fashion over this end of Yorkshire. Oh, excellent. So, uh, yeah, we've got quite a diversity of accents tonight. I mean, we've got me and the, we're, apparently we've got similar accents, David reckoned, on Thursday night, but I can't see it. <laughs> and uh, we, we've got a, a Brummy accent joining us now, and that's uh, Andrew K. Fletcher. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening. I love you know it's a black country accent, not a Brummy oh, accent. I knew that. You see, I knew that. I wouldn't make that mistake, Andrew. I'm a yam yam. Ah, right. Okay, fair enough. I, my apologies <laughs> for that. But, um, Jason, um, I suppose, really, you've got quite a bit to say to Andrew because it's. It, you tried it and it's had quite an effect for you, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I, um, as I, we were saying just beforehand, um, my my problem is circulation. I've got terrible circulation due to the um, antiphospholipid syndrome that that, that, I've, that I've seemed to have got from somewhere. Um, so my circulation is is really really bad, and I noticed um, from time from uh, straight away I actually noticed. I know you say there are a lot of people that it takes a couple of weeks for them to get used to it and, and can things can get worse, but things improved overnight for me, I, literally overnight. The first morning that I woke up, my circulation's better. My hands are, are pink. My hands are pink. They're never pink. They're always cold. And I, See, I take warfarin as well, see, as part of this condition. So uh, my hands are always cold. Uh, my blood's thin anyway, And but now... My circulation is, 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 is apart from, I've got a blood clot in my leg, which stops um, my, the lower part of my right leg from getting very much, but it, it, it is a lot improved um, on before, and, and I found that that happened straight away. That, that's interesting, especially with the, uh, the deep, deep vein thrombosis we're talking about. Is it a yes, it, acute ischemia, yeah. Okay, well, well um, Judy's mum had uh, quite a sizable lump on her leg. Um, she's passed away a few years back now. And um, she got puzzled because it just vanished. And according, according to the medical profession, that shouldn't have happened. And they were very concerned that this blood clot had, had somehow moved around the body, and, which, is, which is a danger. But, but what I suspect had happened is it, it, because the increased circulation, it actually dissolved it away naturally. Wow. Well... well um, for, for all those people who are listening to this on the YouTube replay, um, we're recording the Skype feed so that there will be video of us all talking and you'll be able to see how fit and healthy Jason looks. Because, um, I, I mean, I remember um, <laughs> we both said we were quite concerned about Jason because he had a heart attack just before Christmas and he was looking quite grey, his skin was pale, and he, these real dark circles under his eyes. And um, when I was talking to him about, I think it was 10 days or two weeks after he inclined his bed, um, my other half, Tina, walked in the room to bring me a cup of tea, and she stopped and did a double take. She went, oh, my God, Jason looks so well. And it... it I can see the difference it's made on him, never mind him telling me. I, I had a problem, see, with appetite as well. I lost a lot of weight really quickly um, because I couldn't eat anything. And I thought it was due to the pills that I was taking and, and, and what was going on. Um, but since I've been doing this inclined bed therapy, I, I didn't used to eat anything. I couldn't eat anything. I used to have acid reflux, things that get stuck in my throat. Um, and I, so, so as a result of that, I lost loads of lots and lots of weight. I lost about four stone, and so it, it, that's gone. I, I now eat normally like I used to eat when I was growing up. You know, I'm, I'm in things. I'm all. I'm. 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 I'm sat and I'm always eating and picking. I've put. I have put some weight on. I'm not too much. I hope because I don't want to um, over overstretch my heart. But uh, yeah, it's my appetite's come back. I could. I could list a. a, a, a 
so many things as long as your arm of the the improvements that it's made to me and and one of my um fears when i was wanting to do this was how it would affect my wife because we slept, both sleep in the same bed um and it was actually her that came back who'd read up on it um and she came home from work one day with some bed razors and said we're going to give this a try and so we did that and it, it's due to her and she used to suffer from terrible migraines Bad migraines, she'd have migraines for three or four days on time um, and, and, and won't be able to get rid of them. And she said to me, she said, uh, uh, we've been doing it for about four or five weeks. And she said to me the other day, she said, I had a headache and it was unusual because I thought to myself, my God, I ain't had a headache in so long. She'd not had a headache in, in such a long time, yet she suffers from migraines. Uh, so it, 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 I could give, like I say, I could give a list as long as my arm as uh, as the improvements that it's given me. And uh, has, your, has your wife had any migraine since the bed has been tilted? No. no not a single migraine. My my last migraine um, was in 1994 when I raised the bed. <laughs> it's, yeah, I can it, believe it. it, it the, the inclined bed is a cure for migraine. Now, did we just mention the dreaded cure word? Yes, they don't want that, do they? No, we, no don't want the, we don't want Especially the cure word. Uh, a cheap and simple uh, cure like this one is. I mean, you, you, it's it don't cost you anything. You can just do do it with a couple of bricks. I, I, I honestly would, um, no matter if you're healthy or whether you're healthy or you're not. If you if you're not healthy, then then um, it's going to help you no end. And if you are healthy, you're still going to feel benefits from it. Yes, I think anyone listening to this for the first time is going to be pretty confused. <laughs> because we're talking about inclining the bed, which is merely raising the head end of the bed uh, six to eight inches or 15 centimetres and above uh, to cause the whole bed to slope down from head to toe. Um, we've named this inclined bed therapy. It's not really a therapy. It's how we used to sleep back in ancient Egyptian times because when they pulled the beds out of the tombs, every single one of them was raised exactly 15 centimetres higher at the head end. I know a thing or two, those Egyptians. And also, there's a, there's a wonderful picture of a hospital in Constantinople, um, which was renowned for being more successful treating patients than anywhere else in the world. And that picture illustrates every bed in that hospital is inclined, is raised at the head end. And it, it, it goes back to the Tudor period as well. We had a condition called the sweating sickness, which killed millions of people, even the king of the day. And uh, everybody was fearful of this sweating sickness. And, and if you got it and you went to bed, you didn't wake up in the morning. So what I read was that they placed two guards by the side of the bed and that effectively prevented the patient from lying down and they survived. Wow. That, I mean, this is, this is so amazing how, how effective it is and... I think one thing we're always up against, Andrew, is that mm, an awful lot of people these days cannot see the value of anything that costs nothing. Yes. In fact, I, well, that's my favourite price, is mm -hmm. nothing. I'm a, bit of a, I'm a bit of a cheapskate in life. You know, I've got my, my uh, electric bill down to £12 for the quarter, um, my gas bill down to 15 quid a quarter, and my water bill, well, that's laughable. But, you know, quite rightly so, because there's no, there's no huge amount of money to be handed over, then it can't be worth, worth doing. But that is such, such a mistake. You know, it's, it's possibly the, the, the most sensible thing you could do for yourselves is to simply jack up the head end of the bed. You know, I see people waking up in the mornings and they've got great big Jaffa oranges for eyes, all puffed up. And, um, you know, the next morning... After sleeping on an inclined bed, all, all those baggy eyes have gone. You know, it's quite bizarre. Yeah, that's another thing I noticed as well. I think I noticed that on the first day, the first the morning after, I noticed that, um, first of all, uh, it took me a little while longer to come round from my slumber because I'd been, I think I'd been in such a deep sleep. Um, uh, it took me a little while longer to come round, but once I came round, I felt like I'd been up all day after five minutes, you know, 
felt like I'd been up all day. I didn't have that morning feeling. I, I'd go downstairs and I'd cook myself some, you know, breakfast and what have you. And I'd think, you know, I just feel like I'd just been up all day. So, yeah, yeah. That, again, that was the thing that we noticed when we first tilted our bed. I took the uh, the lads down to the seafront and they got skateboards and I got a bull terrier pulling them up and down the, the seafront and I was running in front of the dog encouraging them. The dog was completely shattered. Now, bull terriers are, are, are amazing dogs. They'll run for miles. But he couldn't run anymore and I got back to the wife and I said, oh, the dog's knackered. She said, but why aren't you? And I thought, wow, I could have run forever. Yeah. You know, and uh, that that was to me that I mean, okay, th this was back in 1994 when when we were experimenting. We didn't really expect, well, to see any staggering differences, but but it did. You know, it, it's varicose veins. You know, my wife's varicose vein had been there for 16 years, and within four weeks it had gone flat. And a nurse called Stephanie Ness, who who butted in on a conversation I was having with her a guy down the local bookshop, um, she tilted her bed at around the same time, and lo and behold, her varicose vein went flat in four weeks. You know, so, so that told me that that now something significant, because what we've shown there is we've changed the pressure from inside the veins that was pushing the veins out, causing them to bulge. We've actually lowered that pressure, and we're now drawing the veins back in. Now, this has implications for edema as well, because the doctors will say raise your legs um, to get rid of edema, but all that tends to do is to push the edema back to the upper torso um, or back to the trunk. And when you stand up again in the morning, you know, the, the fluids all move back down, back down to your legs. But what we found was that the people with edema were reporting, you know, that the, that the edema had gone and, and didn't appear again. So by changing the pressure inside the veins, you reverse the problem. The initial problem was that the pressure inside the veins was greater than the pressure outside of the veins. So fluid from the veins used to migrate into the surrounding tissue. Now what we've done is lowered the veins, which is evidenced by the varicose veins going flat, lowered the pressure in the veins. Now the fluid migrates back into the veins, is whipped around the circulatory system and out through the bladder. Yes, people with a lot of edema will urinate a lot more initially. Um, but that's a good thing because it's actually getting rid of this flu excess fluid. And indeed, people have reported huge weight loss. Uh, and this is in people that, that have a, a fluid retention problem. Right. Well, the, something I wanted to bring up with you, and it's been raised as a, as a concern by a couple of people. Uh, firstly, a friend of mine who's a nurse, and she's saying, oh, you can't do that for people with low blood pressure. And also, the, there's a friend of the show, Mithrin, who's in the chat room now, and his wife has uh, very low blood pressure, and she's, he says that if a doctor takes her blood pressure, they won't let her leave again until it goes into triple figures. So um, I know that Mithrin said his wife had had um, a lot of trouble with leg pain since she started in the raised bed, I think he said it's 30 days they've been trying it now. I don't know whether she's still doing it. I, I think he said she was going to have to pack up. So can you can you advise whether there is a contraindication for someone with low blood pressure or it's perhaps something that, that's an initial stages, they get this aching legs and it will go away? Yeah. Um, what, what's been observed over the years is the blood pressure, because of inclined bed therapy, has moved in both directions. In some cases... It remains stable, but but it's pushed low blood pressure up and it's lowered high blood pressure. You know, but I mean, I I suffer with a uh, high blood pressure, so it's not actually relieved relieved my problem. But my problem, I believe, is caused by um, polycystic kidneys. Yeah, um, which is a you know, it's, it's just unfortunate I've got that, but there you go. Mm -hmm. um, but blood pressure can move in both directions, and I suspect that, that um, a person with low blood pressure might find that their blood pressure would improve. Mm. And maybe that's causing the extra pain. You know, if you're having a bit of extra pressure going through the veins and through the arteries, then that, that could actually register back as, a, as, a, as an ache or pain. 
Mm. I believe you said you, you had a, um, a bit of an ache in your lower legs when you first started, James. Yeah, yeah that, that was really odd. Uh, stiff neck as well. You know, terrible, creaking, cracking stiff neck. Um, and uh, quite a few of us by now were, were, were sleeping inclined and they're all reporting, well, not all, but the majority were reporting uh, sim similar aches and pains initially within the first two to three weeks. But after that, the pains just melted away as quick as they come. Mm. Well, I had I had some pain, but I don't know whether because when I first started, I just I was just at the end of a, about a gout, so I'd got um, bad pain in my yeah. ankles anyway. Yeah, for sure. But but, or, but because I've got um, acute ischemia, I've got um, one of the main arteries into my leg is is blocked with a it's it's actually in a stent that was put in there from a previous uh, blockage. Right. So it can't it it can't be moved. It's um, they, they say because it's stable they're going to leave it where it is um but as a result my lower leg is cold constantly it's like a it's like a dead leg now that's improved as well no end i used to have to go to bed with a hot water bottle i've been going to bed with a hot water bottle every day no matter whether winter summer any every single night i had to have a hot water bottle. i had to take it away with me on holiday i had to have a hot water bottle for me for right foot I don't even wear a sock on my foot now. No. It, it's and yeah. I don't wear a hot water. I don't need a hot water bottle. I don't. I don't have a, a sock on my foot. There's nothing on there. I'm just in bed like I normally, like I used to be. Yes. Before before this all happened. Yeah, that's that's interesting as well. Um, it, again, lots and lots of reports in the early days and indeed all the time is is that people would suffer with cold hands and cold feet in bed. I mean, my wife was a classic example. She'd put her feet on there and they'd be like blocks of ice. And, you know, it would take two hours for the feet to become normal temperature, if if indeed they did. And uh, now she sleeps with the feet out of the bed because they get a little bit too warm. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it, it, it's... And again, and again, I suspect what's happening is if you if you ever put your thumb on a bicycle pump and, and, and forced air through a small gap with your finger, it gets hot. Yeah. So, the, you know, the, because it's under more pressure, right, and because it's flowing at a greater velocity, yeah, or we've increased the circulation uh, marginally, then then that would actually generate a bit more friction. Mm -hmm. So, and it would also distribute the heat better. You know, if you've got a blocked radiator on a truck, it'll overheat, yeah? But if you've got the right size radiator for the truck and if everything's open and moving freely, it takes the heat from the engine and distributes it to the radiator. So the same with the body. You know, if, if we can improve the circulation, we can shift the heat, heat more evenly around the body. Mm. Yeah, I suspect the, there's a guy called the Iceman. And I, I, yeah, I've been watching what he's doing as well with his posture. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I'm, he's using posture. Really? Yeah. I've seen, he's the guy who can submerge himself in ice and not have any ill effects. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, he's pretty amazing, that guy. Um, if anyone hasn't seen it, I urge you to just go to YouTube and just put the Iceman in there and uh, you'll find him. Yeah, so he's, he's obviously worked out how he can control his body temperature as well. I suspect he might have thicker blood than most people as well. Um, because again, if you if you've increased the thickness of the blood, then back to the old bicycle pump analogy, you know, to move thicker blood through the vessels um, would would generate more heat. And indeed, the opposite occurs when you're on warfarin, as Jason said, is because you thin the blood, so therefore there's less friction, and 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 therefore the body temperature cools down below comfortable levels. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. That reminds me of something you, you mentioned uh, a few weeks ago in a message um, when you were talking about getting the word out and, and hopefully having Tony on with us later in the show is, is going to uh, really do wonders for that because it, it, hopefully it will draw in one or two, well, more than one or two, a lot of people that don't normally listen to us. And it, was it you said if this came from... Um, religion or the medical authorities this would be absolutely amazing but because we're just mechanics it can't possibly be true that's that's right well they don't want it to be true yes no. 
absolutely. Well, it's going to cost them a fortune, isn't it? Yes. It, yes. Instead of spending these thousands of pounds on pharmaceutical medications or pharmaceutical, as we prefer to call them, you just raise your bed and suddenly all kinds of things that you thought were lifelong problems, as in Jason's case, suddenly they're gone. Yeah, um, it's. <laughs> if we can move this into the into the sports arena, as we'll hear later from Tony, then you know the sky's the limit. This could this could really fly, especially with the clamping down on the uh, on the drugs and you know and, and what they need is an edge, and I believe we've got something here that gives sports people an edge. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's probably why we, we, as a country, as a nation, we never win anything because we lay flat and everybody else already knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had a lot of feedback from people, weightlifters as well. I've got a weightlifter who's doing incredibly well. Um, um, but, but yes, um, I, I suspect that quite a few people have cottoned on and, and are using it, but unlike Tony, not prepared to broadcast what's been happening to them. Hey, we've got another boxer, uh, Billy Carito. And um, he's been using an inclined bed, and he's, it's improved his his performance, his staying power, his punching power. You know, I'm getting this feedback from the guy, and all he's done is tilted his bed. So, how did you meet um, Tony? Um, how, did you get through, how did you get together? How did he get his bed inclined? He, he, Tony contacted me after he'd watched a video with um, Ch Charles. Clive DeCall with Clive DeCall, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Cl Clive DeCall is a uh, is well, he's a good lad. He's he's a, he's a good man. He helps a lot of people out. Um, different line to what I'm I'm doing, but uh, he helps people with nutrients and and um, and supplements and and you know and, and got health guidance. So uh, Tony um, was advised to contact me by by um, uh, Clive and. Um, he decided to go for it straight away and put his bed on an incline. Um, Tony had been through a very rough patch. He'll tell us more about that in in the uh, when, when he comes on. I mean, at the time at the time he he fought his bout and won his cha his world championship, he was actually homeless, you know, which is which is like a double whammy. You know, he's, we're talking about things that cost cost nothing that have great effect. And here's a guy that hasn't even got a home. Yeah. He's put a couple of bricks under his bed and goes on to win the World Championship <laughs> title fight, which is incredible. Wow. I, I, I never tire of telling people about this inclined bed therapy. I mean, some people must think it, it's almost a cult we're trying to start because um, the, the thing that excites me so much, Andrew, is, is we do get some, some incredible feedback after some of the guests we get on. But we've never had as much feedback as from when we've had you on from that first initial show and uh, get messages from people all over the world now on a regular basis telling me that they've done it and it's wow. And I've just got one here, just arrived on Skype, and it's from a good friend of the show, Rick Dwyer, who made the film Run From The Cure with Rick Simpson. And he says, Rick Dwyer from Canada says, since my wife and I started Andrew Fletcher's inclined bed therapy in February 2016, our sleeping patterns have improved dramatically as well as other health issues. I would like to congratulate Tony on his championship win and thank RN, Tony and Andrew Fletcher for bringing this wonderful therapy to the world. Thank so you. Government. Brilliant. Brilliant. And... It, I'm just trying to spread the word a bit wider and uh, get more. Well, I tell everybody. Mm -hmm. My mum's got her bed inclined. My wife's sister's got her bed inclined. Uh, my my mate, my friend, he's got his bed inclined. It took him some right messing about as well because he's he's got a divan, but he did it. He's got it. He's got it right. He's got the it all on a um, a six inch inclined at the at the head. So. I tell everybody, and then no, this is beginning to sound a little bit like an infomercial. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> you get when, when yeah, you but we're not concert, selling anything, right? are we? We're not. That's the problem. Is we're not selling anything. Maybe if we charge people a thousand pounds, you know, and say, look, here's your couple of blocks of wood. Away you go. It would yeah. spread like wildfire. First of all, you'd be accused of corruption and trying to rip people off, and of course, 
all news is good news. So maybe, you know, being honest and, and, and telling people how it is is probably not the way to go if you want to spread it like like wildfire. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking of looking online, see if I can find a job lot of old medical books. Because, um, like you said, people say, well, what can I prop my bed up on? I said, well, do it, bricks, blocks of wood if you like. But I like your idea, prop them up on old medical books. Cause yeah. now on, they're pretty useless. Yeah, they're going to have to be rewritten, that's for sure. Yeah, it's... Uh... But, I mean, if we study animals in the wild, that's, that's you know, everything starts to make sense. You, you watch a lizard in, a, in an aquarium, and it, if it's too hot, it'll lower itself. And if it wants to warm itself up, it raises its head up, you know, and alligators and crocodiles on the side of a river bank, they'll choose a bank with an incline, yeah, so they can face down or face up. Again, reptiles regulating the body temperature, you know, the, when we stood up, we actually changed the way our circulation worked. When we, when we you know, we, we were hunched over. Um, the holes in the back of the head, which carried the vessels, um, which carried the blood to and from the brain to the skin, um, actually migrated to the top of the head, according to Dean Falk. And she comes up with a, a theory called the radiator theory, um, which when we stood up, our brain decided to, to reroute the circulation to add uh, more cooling to the brain. But there are no vessels. There are no va there are sorry. There are no valves in those vessels. And um, a, a brilliant scientist, uh, Michel Cabernac, uh, Professor Cabernac from uh, University of Laval, Quebec, Canada, um, he placed a Doppler probe where the where the nose meets the eye, and shows normal blood flow from the brain out to the skin. Everybody's got the same. You would think. He then puts a guy on a cycle exercise cycle and gets him overheated and then he puts a Doppler probe back and now the blood is flowing in the opposite direction it's actually flowing from the skin down to the brain so a complete reversal against the pressure of the heart now Kabernack um, approached Falk and Falk's, uh, Falk's theory says that the the brain somehow diverts the flow but like I said there are no vessels, uh, no veins in those vessels, uh, so no valves in those vessels that the brain can use to control the flow of blood. So what I put to Kabernack was that the extra heat generated uh, by the exercise cycle uh, caused extra evaporation from the hot scalp, which in turn changed the density of the blood. So instead of the blood flowing, flowing over uh, T-junctions, it actually went down and, and, and actually took the shortest route down through the brain because it was denser as a result of the evaporative heat loss. Kabernack liked that theory. Uh, whether he's published anything uh, to go along with it, I don't know. Um, he said he would, but um, you know we'll have to wait and see, I suppose, whether that, uh, that comes to fruition. But it's fascinating that, that we can see experimentally that simply overheating the blood and causing more evaporation can change the direction of blood flow against the pressure of the heart. Mm. That, I mean, you mentioned Tony there, and you mentioned that you were trying to get um, the, the baggies, is that Birmingham? Uh, West Bromwich Albion. Yeah. Oh, West Brom, sorry. Uh, yeah. You were trying to get them to try it. Um, have you had any success in getting any football clubs to try it? No. No? No. I, I, I did think you mentioned that there was one club that talked about they might be trying it. Did I? Club. Sure, I'm sure you mentioned a quite a famous club that plays all in red. Oh yes, yes, but that yeah, that's not happened yet. That's in the pipeline. Ah, right. And again, that's through Tony, that's through Tony Moran, and um, his friend Mark. Yeah. No, I think we can guess then which team that plays in yes, red it will can, be. Yes, you, yes, you can. Yes. I, I'm a I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan, and I'm going to be writing to writing to them and uh, and and trying to get in touch and just see if I can get. I, I know a few players on Twitter and things like that, so I'm going to try and point them in in that direction, in your direction. Yes. Because I think that'll give us an edge as well. I'm not sure I'll do that. You know, with potential for 
for improving your team against the baggies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll be playing each other for a while. No, 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 no. Well, I, I was saying to my other half um, this afternoon, we, we were both like kids waiting for Christmas, waiting for this show. And um, I said to her, I said, we've been... I mean, our, our sport, the only sport we follow nowadays is uh, motorcycle racing. And we've been marvelling for the last few years at um, the, the feats achieved by Valentino Rossi. Valentino is 37 years old and he's basically kicking the arse of a load of youngsters who are 20, 21, 22. And uh, he, he finishes the race as fresh as when he starts. I wonder if he's perhaps it on it, or uh, if not, if we were to try and get in touch and get him on it, he'd probably still be doing it at 100. Yeah, I, I've, I mean, I can't, I, well, I, I must have approached oh, tens of thousands of people over the 20 years that I've, I've but, but the initial reaction is, is, is they nod their head and say, oh, yeah, 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 thank you very much, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and walk away thinking they've got one up on you and thinking you're one brick short of a full load. Yeah. That you were going to try and sell them something at some point. That's yes, what they were thinking. of course, yes. We've been conditioned to, you know, to wait for the hit. But, uh, yeah, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's just human nature, I suppose, that, you know, we'll, we'll cast doubt rather than, you know, entertain new ideas. Yeah. I think we've got a question in the chat room, uh, aren't we, uh, Andy? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's, yeah, it's uh, Kevin Mark. Um, good friend of the show again. Kevin's been doing some great work booking us uh, guests on. And Kevin's asking, are there any contraindications where inclined bed therapy would not be possible, i.e. elderly or any particular medical condition? Well... What we've discovered over the years, uh, and the huge amount of medical literature backs it up, is that flat bed rest is perhaps the last thing you want to be doing if you're elderly and firm. You know, this this lady called Stephanie Ness, the nurse that uh, first tilted the bed for varicose veins, was uh, helping a lot of the aged people, and she noticed that all of the people that lived to be close on 100 or more didn't lie down for long in beds and all those that passed quickly spent a long time lying on a bed and in, in fact NASA has been paying people um, $17,000 uh, just to lie on a flat bed or lie on a bed that's uh, head down and feet up um, because they want to cause the, the, uh, the body to age 10 times faster um, which reflects what happens to astronauts in space so they found a cheap method of studying the harmful effects of being in microgravity simply by confining healthy people to either a flat bed or a head down bed. Right. Yeah. And that, that's $17,000. I, I think yeah. I found the experiment online and it's only for about three months they're getting paid that, isn't it? That's right, yes. yes. Yeah. They'd have three months for $17,000. Yes. I, I, I did notice one the other day that was online that was... I think it was a similar amount of money, but you were to lay down in bed and smoke weed for a month. Oh, that sounds <laughs> all right. <laughs> what am I to do with that one, yeah? Yeah, well, the smoking weed might outweigh the damage for laying in the flat bed, mightn't it? Yeah, it might, yeah. One thing that does surprise me as well, Andrew, is that, that people try this for, I don't know, a month or two, and they find all these marvellous benefits for their health, and then... After a month or two, they think, right, I'm fixed now, and put their bed flat, and then wonder why they get ill again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no no logic in that, is there really? Um, well, I mean, for me, the the biggest benefit is is one thing that Jason mentioned there. Um, yeah, yes, it, it did wonders for my sciatica, but the biggest benefit for me was the fact that I'd always uh, didn't matter if I sleep two hours or twelve, always used to wake up tired never ever woke up feeling refreshed and I was quite envious of people that did and I can't remember whether it was the first night or second night I woke up in the morning and I just felt really strange and I thought what's this I feel strange I can't work out what it and, and what it was I wasn't half asleep and bleary eyed I, I just felt great as soon as I got out of bed I thought, wow 
when I realised what had happened, it was like a miracle. Yes. So give yourself a give yourself a good boost. Yeah. Perhaps a good legal like high. A natural high rather than a legal high. Oh, not, yeah, I like the sound of that. That sounds even better. Yeah, but yeah. perfectly legal, of course. <laughs> Unless the uh, they start taxing us on how high our bed is. Yes. You never yes. know, do you? You, you never know. I, I, another thing I noticed, I just want to mention, uh, just briefly, I know that we're, we're sort of like 20 to 9 and we're a little bit before Watershed, but I'll I tell you what else is, uh, the other effect that I've had is that is, is, and my old fellow woke up. Really? Yes. Nice oh. one. Yes. You're, you're, not, not, you're, not, to... you're not by any means the first to have reported that. <laughs> yeah, the early morning would. Oh, go blimey! Honestly, I've nearly had my eye out a couple of times. <laughs> uh, we've, I've been ill and I've been on all these tablets all these months, and like you know, it, 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 I think it disappeared at one time. It just went on holiday. Yeah. So, uh, but oh God, it's back anyway. That's so. That's, that's another one. Actually, I, what we've found as well is that the incline bed has stopped many old people, blokes, particularly blokes, from rolling and falling out of bed. Uh. All right. <laughs> oh, I fell for that one, didn't I? <laughs> you did, didn't you? The old kickstand joke. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a motorbike man as well, Andy. You should have got that one straight away. Yeah, I should. Oh, I'm a bit slow. It's me old age. That's what I blame anyway. <laughs> but we've we've had, you know, we've talked about um, just improvements in in our health, but. If you study most illnesses, like Parkinson's disease, for example, a patient with Parkinson's disease um, in the early stages will wake up completely paralysed. So the partner will then raise them up the bed and sit and get them up propped up on the pillow, and they come round a little bit. And then they raise them up a little bit more, and they come round a little bit more, swing the legs over the side of the bed and get them to, to sit on the side of the bed. And they come round a little bit more, more compass mentis, get them to stand up, get them to move around. By the end of the day, they're walking around like you and I, mm. and then they go back to bed again and start it all over again. It's like, hello, you know, have you considered that it might be the bed? Yeah, absolutely. We've actually got another question for you, Andrew, and it's from Red Robin, who's a newcomer in uh, Raconteur's News chat tonight. So welcome, Red Robin. And uh, he's at, he or she is asking, does inclined bed therapy help individuals with type 1 or type 2 diabetes? Yes. Um, we've just, well, a, a, um, a study has been conducted. It's on my website, which is inclinebedtherapy.com. Mm -hmm. And um, there's research on there from a, a tiny island called Pompeii, um, which... Um, has a huge problem with um, type 2 and type 1 diabetes thanks to the introduction of the American diet. Before the American diet arrived, these people were all super fit, living on fruits and fish. Um, but they've got a massive problem with um, morbid obesity and also a huge problem with, with diabetes. So a, a guy called Tataki uh, Yi Ting, who's a doctor, um, approached me and said, would, would we be able to test this on a group of patients with type 2 diabetes? And um, the beds were all tilted, and the photographs are there of the, the actual beds that were tilted. And what we found was that um, right across the board, it lowered their blood sugar levels quite considerably, simply by tilting a bed. Mm -hmm. But uh, also, I have a, an 82 years young friend who's, who's on... Um, insulin but he's type 2 diabetes on on, on insulin and um, his uh, insulin um, requirements have dropped absolutely phenomenally and um, you know and another lady which which happens to be his wife has noticed that she she's um, uh, had a damaged pancreas caused through um, administration of prednisolone uh, which is a um, a steroid, and uh, she wasn't told what, what, what they were giving her, and she was just said, here, drink this, and then they told her she'd be type 1 diabetic for the rest of her life, and that her pancreas would never never function again. Well, the, pan the pancreas has started to function again, because she's also finding 
that, that you know she's not not needing anywhere near as much insulin, which which ah. is in, which is incredible. You see, I've got a, a, a bit of a interest in that as well because my stepson is type one diabetic, uh, and he's already expressed an interest. He's only fifteen, but he's already expressed an interest in uh, inclining his bed because he he heard me and his mum talking about things, um, and he uh, 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 to me. It's just him trying to get out and having to do his blood sugar and all that sort of thing and uh, take the injections. But yeah, it, that's it's all good. I'm gonna to have to try that on. Try and put his bed up. That's great news. And great news is we've got uh, Tony Moran has joined us. Good evening, Tony. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. You can hear you fine, mate. We haven't got your camera on at the minute. Is, is there any uh, chance you can put your camera on? Right. Okay. Let me see. It's just that we're that's, recording that's, it for uh, I'm there now. YouTube. There you go, Tony. That's brilliant. Let me just fix me top of me hair. I'm going. No worries, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for joining us, Tony. And uh, congratulations on the World Championship victory. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I was just mate. saying to Andrew, uh, before you arrived, um, my partner and I, we follow motorbike racing, and we were we were raving about how Valentino Rossi has been kicking the young kids' asses at the age of 37. Now, um, I, you can go one better than that, can't you? With my age, you mean? Yeah. I'm a ripe young 42. 42. Look at the skin, though. Can't tell, can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, hey Anthony. Uh, tell us bed. about your your uh, your victory, your win, um, and how you won the title. Tell us who who were you up against, what sort of age were they, and uh, and and how did it go? The guy I fought for the world title. His name was Sandy Rob. He's uh, he was a three times ABA Scottish champion. He's a he's a solid pro. He is in, to me, my remembrance. He's a thirty five, I think. 84. Mm -hmm. Rated in the top 10 in Canada. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's a Scotsman. Maybe he lived there for some time. So it was a WBF world title, which is not one of the the main three. There's, there's three that, we all, that we're all well aware of, the IBF, WBA, WBC. This was what's known as a fringe world title. But nonetheless, he was a worthy opponent to beat. He was a solid uh, individual. It was a, a fight over 12 rounds. So if you bear this in mind, at the time, I was living homeless. I was training for a fight without the base. I had a lot of pressures outside of the, the fight game to deal with and contend with. Mm -hmm. But at the age of 42, I got in the ring for 12 hard rounds. The, the fight's going to be up today and for people to watch soon, quite, quite soon as well. The footage to give evidence. It's always evidence-based in my opinion though. So the evidence will show that for 12 rounds, the fight was from beginning to end was was at a relentless pace. So if you bear that in mind, 42 years of age, living homeless, dealing with a lot of pressure outside the ring, was able to get in the ring on fight night and, and perform like a, an athlete of 20 years of age. Now, besides my intensive training program, my coach, my friend Harden, who's a, a fantastic coach, who guided me towards that world title. I also had the benefits of health and the benefits of inclined bed therapy. Therapy, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> inclined bed therapy. And, and what will also be noticed by people if they do want to watch the fight is that for 12 rounds, I didn't sit down once. Do you understand what I mean by that, Jason? Yeah, yeah, when you're in the corner. Yeah, most, no, no, no 42 year old fighters in a world title fight stand for 12 rounds like I did. I did. Do you know why I did? Because Andrew told me to. And I trust Andrew. So, what Andrew explained to me was, was gravity's at play when I'm standing up. When I'm sitting down, it's only half at play. So, my recovery is cut in half. If I lie down, as I don't you want it. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be lying down in the ring, but you know what I mean. If you're lying down, then gravity's not at play. So it's quite logical, isn't it? It's it it, it is an incredible story. Um, can you give some idea of um, your your previous what what you know how you were previously your career your boxing career? Uh, I think I I had a quick look at your record. I think you were sort of. I think 26 wins and 60 feet. What was it like before? And uh, and what 
what was the major difference before, perhaps when you weren't as successful, uh, to now that, that, that you know you, you've won a world title? Well, just let me add this though, just what I was speaking uh, prior about. If you're also again evidence based, watch the video from the first round to the last round. My body and my muscular, um, my my muscular sort of stamina and endurance didn't fatigue once, and that's that's trust me when I say that's that's some going. If you watch the fight, watch how relentless it was, and then bear in mind of 42, and from the first round to the last, I was as muscularly fresh throughout. That makes sense as well. Yes, it does. I just turn my phone off. Sorry. Okay. So I didn't fatigue muscularly once throughout the fight. That's something I've never experienced before. Uh, I've, I, my boxing career, um, all my fight career has been an uphill struggle for many different reasons. I'm not going to go into it because it, it's too long-winded. But the point is, is that with age and maturity, but then finding Clive the Carve, he put me onto Andrew. Oh my God. <laughs> like it's just become amazing. And I've won a world title of 42, not to prove... Uh, not, to, not to prove anything to myself because I know what I am but I wanted to prove something about health and wellness and yes. incline bed therapy that's what I wanted to prove to, to people and I, I wish it was on a bigger stage I really do I so, I so wish that but the story's not over yet yeah this big thing about oh so and so stole my guests and, and really we don't give a damn who interviews anybody so long as we get the word out particularly Something as important as what yourself and Andrew are, are talking about here. Sharing and caring, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. There, there was one thing one thing that, that, that Tony did that he hasn't mentioned, and that is to drop his hands down. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a massively important. So and drop... when, you, when you're back in the corner, is to have your hands down by your side and shake them as if you're washing your hands and shaking off the excess water. Again, that's that, to put oh, the power right. back into the back into the hands. I did listen, Andrew, because I did it. If you watched the footage, you I, did I it. I know you did it. Have you watched it, have you? I have indeed. You sneaky devil. I also <laughs> watched your original fights where you was orthodox boxing yeah, yeah. and how quickly you fatigued, age 37. Yeah. Oh, listen. Listen, I've been fighting since the age of 13, so I understand how different it is now. Yes. Yeah. I, I did um, share the link in the chat room there about um, from Andrew's website where you gave the testimony of, of your you gave a picture of your hands the night after the fight and how quickly they recovered. Um, Red Robin has just said, "I wish Tony had before and after pictures of his hands on there. It looks like he only has pictures of what his hands look like after the fight." He doesn't have pictures of how fast the swelling decreased because of the inclined bed therapy. So maybe that's something you can do next time. No, actually, actually, you did it. I'm looking on my phones. I'm pretty sure I took photos of both. Yes, you did. I did, didn't I, Andrew? Yes, he's got a picture of himself and his kids in the hotel room. Yeah. No, at home. At home, sorry. After the hotel room. Right. And, his, ha and his hands are normal. Yeah, I'm going to show it. Um, that that's something you could perhaps show on Andrew's website. I mean, we'll we'll put all the links up um, when we post the podcast on our website, so people will be able to go and look at the um, the links. There's the uh, the testimony on Andrew's website. Also, there's the it's quite a good article about um, your achievement in the Guardian as well. I've been sharing that with quite a few people. Yeah, that went, that went, that went, that was widely, that was widely read, though. Yeah. But you know what, Andrew? I did try, I, I, I always try, you know what, you know what I do? I, but I try to get inclined bed therapy mentioned, but... I yeah, know how the, the reporters work, Tony. The editor isn't down to me, you understand? I mentioned you at every opportunity. Yes. Well, you're on Raconteur's News, that's even better. <laughs> it, it is. But what I'm, we I'm, need, to, what we I'm, need to do now is to get more boxers... And, and get more sports people involved in this, you know, to give our to give our Olympics team an edge over the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, what are they waiting for? You know, recovery recovery is just I don't I don't get lactic acid build up anymore. Yeah, just as I predicted. Fitness is better. Fantastic. Everything's better. 
So the, the, the lactic acid is that burning feeling in your muscles, isn't it? When yeah. you eat tea, yeah. Well, the point I'm making is, Andy, is that I, when, I, when I train hard, I've trained immensely hard today. Mm-hmm. Now, sadly, I'll be sleeping in a flat bed tonight because I'm staying in my ladies. But when I'm in the incline bed, I won't notice any... I won't notice any soreness tomorrow. I might tomorrow because I'm sleeping in a flat bed. But mm-hmm. tomorrow, you know, when I get back in the incline bed, no soreness whatsoever. I recover. I recover overnight immediately. Yeah. Well, one thing we've noticed from our experience is we, we raised our bed. It must be getting on for probably even more than a year ago now. And there were some things that we didn't actually notice changing until we go away and forget to take the bed roses, which we did a few weeks back. And you sleep in a flat bed for a night or a couple of nights. And we stayed in a hotel, uh, lovely memory foam mattress and all that. But when we got up in the morning, we went to the bathroom. As you walk past the mirror, you, you glance in the mirror and think, who the hell is that in the mirror with the big swollen eyes and the puppy oh. face? <laughs> why, why, why something so logical that people just dismiss? It drives me insane. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were discussing this earlier on where it, that people don't value things that are just for, they, that don't have any monetary value attached yeah, to. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's the way of the world. It's just sick, isn't it? Horrible. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's something like this. Um, I'm so pleased that Andrews uh, managed to get you on to come and talk to us because. I, I've been expanding, expanding this theory for what, 18 months or whatever it is since first spoke with Andrew and tried it myself, but I've only actually been telling sick people about it. Mm. Now, with your experiences, Tony, and your testimony, we can now say it's not just good for sick people, it, it's good for people who are well as well, and, and they can find yeah, out. that's true. Well, I reckon, I reckon, because we, we've seen these inclined beds come out of the Egyptian tombs. Now, they must have worked bloody hard building those pyramids, you know, dragging those pieces of stone up those, yeah. up those ramps. Yeah, quite an amazing feat, really. And uh, even the workforce had mud, mud beds, and those mud beds are still preserved, and every single one of them is inclined. You know, how did we miss something so logical? Do you know what, Andrew? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know if you sold the, the the concept of like sleep like an Egyptian to women, and the Kardashians slept in these inclined beds? That would be it. It'd be, it'd be done. Job would be done. What are you were saying about about? Could you turn it away for free? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think sleep sleep like an Egyptian could be a good little catchphrase there. Seriously? Because yeah. sadly, it has got it's got the sales have got to be involved. If you, if you don't if you don't if there isn't a sales pitch involved in this day and age, people are just until people are. This is what I'm finding when people are desperate. That's when they'll do it. That's when they'll try something because you've got nothing else to try. Mm. Yeah. So I, I've had people in my life, in my circle, who, who, through desperation of not sleeping, of being kept awake by the baby's coughing, um, and so many, so many illustrations I can offer. But the point I'm making is, I'll then say to them. Please just try this. I'll be going on at them, but I've just stopped going on at people now. I say, just let me do this for you. Just let's see. Snoring, can't sleep with my husband. He snores too much. Guaranteed overnight, it's, it's changed, it's solved. And that's it then. Yeah, you got the evidence then, but they still look at you like you're nuts, but they just can't work out why it was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're banging your head up against the wall all the time, but you know, that, that wall will come down sooner or later. But because they're like your yeah. opponent, Tony. Yeah, but you, you care about these people, so you can't stop trying. That's the problem. That's, yes. Well, it's yes, not a problem. It's, it's just something that I won't get. I, I just don't see a person no more. As you, obviously, you've learned, Andy, because you've been doing a lot longer than me, but I'm just an advocate for you now. That's what I'm doing. Cheers, mate. Well, I, I, it's been it's been pretty easy for me to uh, to convince people to do it. And, and uh, I think everybody that I've met that's that I've told about it is doing it. Um, and it, but it's been pretty easy for me because the, just the difference in me, I were a skeleton with skin hanging off it, you know, just really? four months ago. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. What's your medical condition, Jason? Uh, I've got, um, a condi- I had a heart attack uh, early December 
last year. Uh, that was my second one. I've got a condition called antiphospholipid syndrome, which uh, it's really thick blood. But I, so I, I'm on blood thinners, and uh, so but I, I'd really been uh, I'd really been ill, and I really looked like a skeleton with just some grey skin all, uh, hung over it. That, and Jesus. people, uh, well. Uh, I worked my mother-in-law's uh, over the weekend, and I was trying to explain it to my mother-in-law and her husband, who's uh, obviously my father-in-law. He's he's just all he just kept saying was, "Just look at him. Just look at him. Just look at him. That that's all you need to see. Just look at him." You are that's the evidence. That's all we could say. You're the evidence, aren't you? Well, we we were so concerned about um, Jason's health because I mean you, you did look really ill and and like grey and the dark circles under your eyes, that, particularly after the heart attack, it was more noticeable. But um, um, I mentioned at the start of the show, and uh, my Tina came in to do, to bring me a, a cup of tea when I was talking to Jason on Skype after one of the shows. After only two weeks of inclining his bed, she went, "Oh my God!" Did a double take. Jason looks so well, he looks like he's been to Spain for a couple of weeks. Who convinced you to do it, Jason? How did you become involved? How did you get uh, convinced? Well, obviously, um, I, I... Sorry, I'm saying obviously when it's clearly in obvious because you don't know, but I, I hooked up with uh, Andy and Andy asked me to be co-presenter on here and he'd uh, previously had Andrew on, on uh, when he was... Uh, on what we enemy enemy within weren't it? Yeah. And I'd I'd heard and I'd listened to uh, I'd listened to Andrew's uh, presentations and things like that. And I'd always thought to myself, it was always sort of like in the back of my mind, oh, I, you know, I'll I'll do it. <laughs> uh, and then it was my wife uh, came home with some bed incliners from she was working as a warden uh, at a, a, a local old people's place and they've got these bed incliners in the wardrobe she says can I have them and they said yeah no problem so she's brought them and said we need to try this because she'd she'd read about it she'd heard me talking about it and uh, posting things on Facebook about it and so she uh, said well we're going to try this and we tried it and, and for me it was instant then the very next day I felt I felt I felt uh, like I were human again mm-hmm that's pretty good. And uh, Tony, we've got a question for you from the chat room, and this is from Red Robin. And Red Robin is asking, what exactly are the benefits that athletes like Tony receive from inclined bed therapy? Hello, do you answer that? Me answer it. Oh, do you want me to answer it? If you could, please, Tony. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, so before inclined bed therapy, i would be training intensely. I'd be waking up the next day uh, riddled with pain and soreness. Muscular soreness, I don't mean uh, joint soreness, muscular soreness. Injuries would last so much longer as you're getting older. The circulation, the blood flow is, is less, I suppose. So lying flat doesn't allow for the, the blood to get to the area of damage. So it doesn't recover as quick. I'm in, I'm in combat sports, I get a lot of damage. So that's a massively important part for me. It allows me to train more efficiently the next day. Allows me to put uh, more more intensity and effort in on a consistent basis, as I wouldn't be able to because I'd be so sore. Uh, in terms of my respiratory system, uh, the lung capacity uh, of, of 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 my inhalations of oxygen are better. Everything's better. I feel stronger. My uh, physicalities look look even better than than they did before it. In terms of like muscular density, and I take my top off if you want. I'm ripped, <laughs> I'm ripped. Uh, but you know, I'm being serious. There's there's so many benefits, like um, aesthetic benefits to it too. If you you know if you're that way inclined, if you wanna you, you do wanna look physically well, it, it impacts on that. So so many benefits. But it's, I just feel great off it. And my sport, my sport and life has just improved dramatically. And it is the hardest game, boxing. Proven, well, fight sports, MMA, Thai boxing, uh, boxing, all very, uh, um, very demanding sport. The yeah. only sports in the world where you have to train as hard as any other athlete, but then you have to endure the, 
the physical punishment that other athletes don't endure. Mm. So it is proven that the, the fight sports are the pro- toughest proven sports in the world for that reason. Other well, sports are very hard, very demanding. Uh, Tour de France, row and all that. But trust me, when you're in there for 12 rounds, going toe for toe, there ain't nothing that can beat that in terms of intensity and toughness and state of mind and mental pressure and all them things. So there you go. Does, does it help with the... Uh... You know, any facial injuries you might get during a fight, you know, you might get... Does it help with that? Everything, Jason. Any any swelling or any damage, even even damage to the bone. I got a crack rib. Would you believe I got a crack rib before that world title fight? So I went into that... I meant to say that before, by the way. I had a crack rib going in to a world title fight. Now, it happened 10 days pre- prior to the fight. I was in a lot of pain. Honestly, a lot of pain. Wow. I did, couldn't spar again after that. that it, was, it happened in a sparring session. I couldn't spar after that. I just had to do uh, intensive training. But I couldn't even do the intensive training for like five days after the, the, the injury. It was too painful. So, but I do firmly believe that the incline bed therapy, I'm not saying it was all that. I've, I've got a very strong mental strength to, to take forward into, into what I do. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sculpted to adversity, I'd say, in terms of the things I've done, so I'm a tough, tough, tough competitor, tough-minded individual. But I, I definitely will say that the, the the incline bed therapy assisted the the site of the injury to to get us to a point where I could accept the pain before I went into the fight. Yeah, what well, one thing that that has been reported, and indeed I've noticed myself, is old scar tissue, and we're talking about scars that have been there for most of your life. Yeah, it suddenly becomes smoother and less visible. And it, it takes a while for you to realise. You look, I mean, I've got um, quite a sizable, well, did have quite a sizable scar on my leg, where I had a running with some barbed wire, and uh, it left a deep groove. That deep groove's all filled in. You know, it's it's just barely visible. Look at the four of us. Look at our skin. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Well, uh, I, 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 how old you guys are, but I'm, you know, I, th- I think our skin is, is showing. I'm, what, I'm sixty. I'm sixty this year. Yeah. Well, Listen, there's, there's aesthetic qualities, there's, there's vanity benefits to this as well. Your skin, your hair, your eyes, everything. And your sex life, according to Jason as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, listen, guys, it, this first hour has absolutely flown by. What we normally do at this time, we put on a quick tune to so we can uh, grab a drink or yeah. a quick comfort visit if we need it. And oh, we just to do the same. And... Uh, Managed to find a song for the break, which I thought was quite apt. It's called Positively Inclined. So we'll be <laughs> four minutes, folks. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, to be fair, you did ask us to boast the question. So, Kate, um, Jason, it's your turn to answer now. About my diet? Well, I, I'm coming from a place where I've not really eaten anything for like six months, really, and uh, nothing. So what I'm eating at the what I'm doing at the moment is if I feel like eating something I'm eating I'm eating, and and it don't matter what it is. But I I do have a a, a pretty good diet. So we do eat a lot of uh, fresh vegetables, things like that. We don't eat a lot of fatty foods. We do occasionally. I do like a bacon sandwich, and I know uh, Tony's not going to really approve of that. But um, I I'm do. I'm joking. <laughs> I do uh, like the odd occasional sam- uh, sandwich, but like I say, I'm in a situation where uh, just seeing me eat is just is is good enough for for you know for my wife and things like that, and, and yeah, just being able to eat and having a, a full stomach. So, of course, my my, my we, but I remember a time when we were having his kitchen done a couple of years ago, uh, and we were on takeaways for all week because we'd got got the, nothing. We we got no kitchen. It was being completely rebuilt, uh, and by the end of it, your body's craving some vegetables, isn't it? It's yeah. like even goodness. You've, you've yeah. got to listen to your body. You've got to listen to it, and it's it's craving vegetables. And and just think about it. it never really craves a a kebab, or it never really craves. You know, you just perhaps fancy a kebab or a pizza or something like that. But yeah. But we you don't know, eat. We don't eat for we, we shouldn't eat for taste. Should we? Well, we should, but we should we should eat for nutrition. We don't eat for that that sugary, salty, fatty taste, do we? That's not what we're after. 
But our bodies crave energy and crave nutrition. But we've been conditioned to buy so many things that don't even contain food to, to solve that. Food most, like most, most food contain does not contain food. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It's, it's each to their own. I'm not trying to get on a soapbox, but I'm telling you now, look a, look after your diet and get your bed inclined. And it's, it's about balance as well, isn't it? Life will change. Yeah, 80 20 rules are good rules, isn't it? It, it, it? I mean, if you're if you're a boxer, I mean, the nutrition and the, all this stuff, I mean, you're into keeping fit and uh, nah, doing, doing nah. your exercise and all that sort of thing, so that nutrition thing is really important, but oh. it's about balance. I mean, I can't walk very far, so... Uh, you know, I, I can't do all that exercise, so I have to sort of balance out what I what I can, uh, you know, what I can and can't eat. Has the walking changed at all, Chase? Uh, it's now well, it did for a, for a couple of days, but now it's it sort of seems to have regressed a little bit. Uh, but I'm, I'm expected. I've, I've expected that the. Uh, it, it it's not been it's not been right for well for three years now it's nearly three years since I've had this blood clot in this leg yeah Jason yeah what about if you just overwhelmed your body with health in terms of what you're putting in your mouth and what was going inside your body would do you think that could have any effect on on the illness that you you've got well I, <clears throat> look. Anything that would help, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. It's, uh, you know, sometimes you get the... I, I, you know, I feel so well at the moment that I don't... I feel like I, I should be counting my blessings and not rather, you know, trying to push myself to towards something that might make me feel a bit different in another way. If I change my diet too much, I might start having problems with me, you know. Yeah, here's the, the, the key to it, though. You don't have to change nothing. You just have to add a few, a few choice um, supplements, mineral salt, Vitamins. That's all you got to do. Just add to what you're already doing. So you, add you the... see, I, I've also got to be careful with things like that because I have. To, I'm on warfarin, and my uh, my blood has to be two and a half times thinner than yours. So and it has to be monitored as well. And there are these supplements and things like that can have an effect on your INR. Min- um, minerals I, and vitamins. You mean? Sorry. Do you mean minerals and vitamins can have an effect? Yeah. Yeah. On your INR. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they, they can have an effect on your on your your I and R. And if sometimes my blood went to uh, six point five one time, which was right six and a half times thinner than than a normal person's blood, uh, and it were really quite scary. And it was it was simply because uh, I'd I'd taken something that I I shouldn't have taken, that I'd had something that I shouldn't have had. It, it, I think it was sort of broccoli or something ridiculous. Really, yeah. With, with, oh, with vitamin, vitamin K. K, yeah. Yeah, vitamin K, yeah. Yeah. Have you had Clive the Carl on this show? We had Clive on uh, way back, yeah, but we've had him on, yeah. Oh no, I was going to say because he he answered a few of those questions. Uh-huh. Besides, what what you get from the uh, from the bed therapy, maybe with the nutritional side as well, that could have a double effect. I find it's had a double effect for me, anyway. Yeah. But obviously, I'm not suffering from any illnesses, and I'm hoping to prevent them by carrying this on mm. well it, yeah for, for me my major health problem is i fell off a house when i was 19 years old and uh, got compression fractures in his spine uh-huh. so um I, I managed to get fairly fit again i got fit enough to join the army and the marines although they didn't want me, thank goodness um i i i drove a truck for 22 years long distance before i had to pack up and now it is it's just the slowing down with age and the fact that the the, the, the crushed spine is, is is causing me problems. But that's kind of been alleviating quite a lot but with Andrew's help. And also the fact we've discovered this um, CBD oil. And I know for a fact if I could get hold of some proper Rick Simpson oil, I could be completely pain-free in a matter of about 10 or 15 minutes. I've, I've actually managed to get some to try once, and just a grain of rice-sized piece on the end of my finger, took it like that, 10 minutes later, no pain. Why can't you get it regular? Um, because it's it's um, legally in the same class as heroin. Serious? Yeah. Why? 
be, well, I, I would imagine because of the curative powers that it has. Oh, you're not allowed to say cure, are you? Because of the healing powers that it has. And uh, it makes people well from all kinds of things, which cost thousands of dollars to, to just throw drugs at. And it, oh, yeah, it's all conspiracy, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. You'll have to try. Well, well, that's for another show, I think. That absolutely is. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening tonight. And thanks for all the wonderful questions from the chat room. Uh, great to see some new faces in there. And we'll be back for a, a one-off special tomorrow night um, because we couldn't do a, an update last month with Paul, our high-level financial insider. So we've said we'll do one with him tomorrow night. That'll be on at 8 o'clock on raconteursnews.com. And then Thursday night, we've got a return visit from author John Hamer. And he'll be talking about his new book that's out. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about that one because we'll be covering the banking industry, one of our oh. subjects. So with that, I'll say thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Jason, as always. Cheers. And um, thank you to everyone for listening because if it weren't for you, we'd just be offering their way to ourselves <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow night and uh, wish you all a good evening Yeah, please give us your feedback if you try and incline bed therapy we need your feedback most okay. important Yeah, please do that and anyone who listens to this you can uh, contact Andrew through the Facebook page or uh, his incline bed therapy Facebook group or on his website at www.inclinedbedtherapy.com. And uh, you can leave testimonials on there so that other people can share your experiences. Nice one, and Hey, Tony. Respect, big man. Yes, um, you always you know that. Much love, sir. Right, okay. hey, fellas, it's been, a, it's been an honour. I'll uh, hopefully speak to you again in the future, privately or publicly. It doesn't matter to me. That would be great, Tony. I look It'd be forward. nice to meet you meet you in person as well, Jason Andy. That'll be good. You enjoy your dinner. We'll meet up soon again. Uh, I you. hope. And uh, we've got another song to play out with. And what's this one? This one, not quite as appropriate as the last one. This one's called Raise Your Head. Uh, <laughs> and good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. There we go. Raise your head. That went well, off. Well, yeah. I think that was that was very nice. It was uh, it covered a lot of subjects. Yeah. I think Tony's edge is just amazing. You know. It, yeah. You've done a great service there, Tony. Yeah. As many times you want me to, mate, I'll do it. Oh, I really appreciate that, mate. And you, Andy and Jace. Yeah. Fantastic, mate. Yeah, br brilliant. A great show. I mean, I know Andy's been looking forward to it. He's been like. Sending me messages all days, like yesterday and day before, and he's been, he's been like a kid at Christmas. So yeah. I know he's going to have enjoyed it. So uh, at least watching him is, is has been been great. Well, the, the, I don't normally get nervous, but um, I did get a little bit nervous for some strange reason the last time we had Rick Simpson on, even though we know Rick really well. He's glo he's a global megastar in my mind. Yeah. Oh, well, Rick's got one of our T-shirts. Has he, yeah? Yeah. Well, when we meet up, we'll we'll get you one as well. Well, like Sir Rick, Andrew, Clive, they're, they're like my pop stars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, should we, oh, I missed that. Should have, should have made what? a point, because you messaged me and said he's like your pop star or Premier League player, didn't you? Mm.